continue to track through the day. Right now, though, we're shifting focus to a very, very exciting story. Chandrayaan-3 was launched on July 14th. It is set to make history when it lands on the south side of the moon on August 23rd. It's going to make India only the fourth country in the world. This is obviously after the United States, Russia and China to land on the moon's surface. Now, the phase that's going to take place now, which is between August 17th and August 23rd, is the most crucial. Because, as we already know, the two parts, the, the propeller module and the landing rover are supposed to separate today. Now, the descension process onto the surface of the moon is where the last time Chandrayaan-2 actually had a problem. And that's exactly what ISRO has tried to troubleshoot in its reconstruction with Chandrayaan-3. Now, a billion hopes are riding on this mission's success. Remember, Chandrayaan-3 is set to land on the moon next week on Wednesday. Take a look at the mission's journey so far. This is an explainer. A little over a month after lifting off, Chandrayaan-3 is now entering the last leg before its historic landing on the lunar south pole. The journey so far has gone exactly as planned. Chandrayaan-3 was successfully launched on the 14th of July from the Satish Dhawan Space Centre in Sriharikota, Andhra Pradesh. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. The spacecraft was placed in a highly elliptical orbit around the Earth within 16 minutes after liftoff. For the next two weeks, Chandrayaan-3 performed as many as five orbit-raising maneuvers. On the 1st of August, ISRO successfully injected the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft into the lunar orbit, marking the completion of a critical phase in the moon mission. Over the next few days, multiple orbit reduction maneuvers were performed to lower Chandrayaan-3 to a 100 km circular orbit and thereby bringing it closer to the moon. The propulsion module detaches from the Vikram lander, allowing it to descend from orbit. The home stretch has been described by the ISRO chief as 15 minutes of terror. That's when the lander has to fire its engines at the right times and right altitude while using just the right amount of fuel and making accurate scans of the lunar surface before finally touching down. When at the 30 km altitude, the lander begins to use its thrusters to navigate down to the surface. This is referred to as the pod braking phase. While the thrusters help in keeping the lander from crashing, the lander reorients itself to 90 degrees for a safe landing. Then at around 100 meters altitude, the lander scans the lunar surface looking for obstacles. If there are no obstacles, it will begin a slow descent. The thrusters will keep firing till touchdown. But this is a mammoth task. Soft landing a lunar module will require going from a speed of over 6,000 km per hour to zero. Just hitting the brakes will not help the situation. And this is precisely where Chandrayaan-3's predecessor, Chandrayaan-2, crashed while landing. But Chandrayaan-3's lander thrusters are much more advanced than its predecessor. While Chandrayaan-2 had five thrusters in all, Chandrayaan-3's lander has only four. This will make it easier to maintain equilibrium. ISRO has made the lander's legs sturdier, given its larger solar panels and increased fuel carrying capacity. The equipment was tested by soaking in temperatures as cold as those on the moon and running landing simulations on surfaces similar to the lunar surface. Even the landing site chosen for Vikram in this mission is larger than that of the previous mission, measuring 4 km by 2 km. The Vikram lander will be able to make a soft landing on the moon's surface on the 23rd of August. Once landing safely, India will be the first country to touch down on moon's south pole. After landing, the Prabhyan rover will be released to study the lunar surface. The six-wheel vehicle has instruments configured with payloads to provide data related to the moon's surface. It will gather data and analyze the chemical composition of the lunar surface, rocks and soil. It weighs 26 kgs and has a mission life of one lunar day of 14 Earth days. One of the experiments will be the spectropolarimetry of habitable planet Earth. The idea is to look for changes that a life-supporting atmosphere 
makes to the starlight passing through it. The moon is expected to be thousand times calmer than the earth. Another experiment is to detect and study lunar quakes, which are essentially rumblings under the surface of the moon. Instruments will also conduct experiments to study near-surface plasma activities on the moon. This research is critical for future missions, especially if humans are to stay on the lunar surface for longer period. Real-time distance between the moon and the earth will be measured. This will help us gain a deeper understanding of the moon's orbital behavior and its influence on earth. And finally, there is the matter of studying the composition of lunar soil. This can be given this can give insight into the evolution of the moon and the processes that shaped it during the formation of solar system. At the end of the day, this mission will be an unprecedented lunar landing accomplishment for India and paves the way for future interplanetary missions. All right, and one more story related to the same subject. Let's take a look now at the breakdown of Chandrayaan-3. Today, the propulsion module and the lander Vikram will be separating. Now, what that's going to mean is that the main job for the propulsion module will be done. But the propulsion module will continue to journey in the same orbit. It does have one instrument on it that will continue to collect data. After separation, the lander rover module will prepare for the powered descent to the lunar surface and that as our last explainer just showed you is the most crucial period. My colleague Akanksha now explains more on the paths of Chandrayaan-3. Take a look. The anticipation is high as India's moon mission Chandrayaan-3 is inching closer to its planned landing date of August 23rd near the moon's little explored South Pole. If successful, this mission will mark a significant achievement for the Indian Space Research Organization and contribute valuable data to our understanding of the moon. Let me break down for you what you can expect when India's lunar mission actually reaches the moon. Remember, there are two parts to this. There is the lander and propulsion modules, which will in fact be separating. These modules will embark on separate journeys. The propulsion module, which is also going to be the lander, and it will be separating in the orbit. The lander will begin its more most crucial journey and upon touchdown uh, Vikram which is carrying a rover that is known as Pragyan will be attempting uh, to land. This attempt of course as we all know is going to be one significant aspect of this entire lunar mission which is that it will be attempting a soft landing on moon's south side. And this is going to be a series of complex braking maneuvers. The rover, as we all also know, is known by the name of Pragyan. It will roll off the lander and Pragyan will be exploring the nearby lunar area. And as we all know, this is a very significant journey because it will be exploring the dark side of the moon. It will be gathering images to send back to the Earth. And so, as the world watches, the team at ISRO will continue to monitor the health of the spacecraft from the ISRO telemetry tracking and command network, that is the ICE-TRAC. 